Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, the K.A. Skyler Madison, and today this is like the highest resolution image that will be appearing in the coloring book that will be coming out uh, as soon as I launch my website and as soon as I feel like the coloring book is finished. Uh, I started with a thumbnail because since this is such a high resolution image, uh, trying to get some of this stuff down, uh, it wound up being a little bit laggy. But not only that, but I had this brush uh, that I just downloaded off of the uh, Clip Studio Paint uh, library. Uh, and this brush, I, I noticed that when it was made to be a little bit smaller than it was designed to be, it wound up creating this weird little bulb at the top of each stroke. And uh, I, I played around with that a little bit, and that wound up making something that looked like an alien plant. And so, uh, you know, I've been kind of working on this weird uh, concept, like weird concept images for something that might develop into something someday. I guess, kind of a hodgepodge of ideas, like uh, uh, Stargate meets Star Wars sort of a thing. Um, but this image kind of gets me to think maybe uh, this electrical orb that happens to be in the middle of the, uh, the canvas inside of this uh, composition, this illustration and stuff like that. Maybe uh, it's creating uh, a species uh, that uh, the antagonists possibly want to take control over, thinking that the uh, protagonist possibly uh, want, wants for themselves as well, uh, but in all actuality the protagonists want to destroy it. Possibly it's uh, creating something similar to the Zerg. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I like StarCraft. I think uh, the Zerg are awesome in a way. They're a kind of derivative of something like the Borg, only they're biological rather than bio, bio and technological uh, kind of composites of each other. <clears throat> I, I kind of think that this is uh, uh, my magnum opus uh, thus far. And, uh, you know, Bernie Wrightson, he was someone who was also inspired by uh, the work of Frank Frazetta and... Uh, if you just Google uh, Bernie Wrightson right now, uh, you'll be able to see uh, that his style was distinctly unique, very different from uh, Frank Frazetta, but the cross-hatching work was just a whole order of magnitude of just pure amazing. Just It's, it's amazing just to look at that stuff. And so I, I kind of wanted to create an image kind of like Bernie Wrightson. And uh, I, I think I, I had a fair amount of success with that. Um, <clears throat> the, the funny thing is, is like right about here, uh, I thought, okay, the, the right mountain is finished. And then I zoom out and it turns out I'm only like a quarter of the way finished with <laughs> the, the mountain on the right side of the canvas. Uh, but yeah, you, you can see that I, I used a, a, a layer... Uh, that drew uh, red lines and occasionally that helped me kind of sketch out the basic shape of uh, something like, a, a, like you know the silhouette of the shadows where they need to be where they need to start where they need to end where uh, a series of hatches need to, to start and end and, and such uh, with this mountain uh, you know I, I kind of made the top of it a little bit organically and at least for me, I know that when I was studying uh, Jeff Smith's artwork with the Bone comic book series, I, I, I noticed that, you know, sometimes when he'd construct a mountain, it would be something like overlapping angular shapes or something like that. And, you know, that's fine. That, that works for him. But at least for me, I really feel as though uh, I need to actually think of these as geometrical objects. Uh, and, and that helps me be able to do the cross hatching and stuff. So the upper portion of this this mountain side uh, to you know on the right side of uh, of the canvas and stuff, the upper portion of it uh, was a little bit more difficult to conceptualize uh, where where should the the shadows be 
and everything like that. Uh, and so when I wound up constructing the uh, the cro you know the, the actual structure for uh, the the rock structure on the left side of the canvas, that wound up being better thought out. Um, I, I experimented a little bit with the cross hatching, uh, especially with little bits and portions of uh, this mountainside that is constructed out of soil rather than stone. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there's like these little bulges that kind of develop in the soil and uh, kind of wanted to, to play around with that a little bit. And it, I think it turned out looking really good. Um, like I said, this is kind of like uh, my magnum opus right here, the, the masterpiece that, uh, like, I've never drawn an image more awesome than this uh, before. At least that's my opinion. Um, <clears throat> you can, like, occasionally I would look at uh, some of the, like, I use a sponge brush on the initial uh, sketch with the thumbnail and, uh, y you know, the random pattern of that spongy brush kind of gave me a little hint here and there where I might want to have uh, cross hatching, uh, how the rock face should be constructed, uh, where there should be shadow on the um, on the ground and stuff. That that helped me out a little bit, and uh, yeah, just it, whatever whatever I can use to help me kind of flesh this out. Uh, I used to my advantage um, you, even though you know a sponge brush like it, it just puts down random patterns of black um, uh, even though it's completely random it even that can help you, uh, you even if you just kind of like splotch it all, all, all around your canvas and stuff like that uh, it, it, since it's on the thumbnail you'll never see that sponge brush especially since uh, the image was such a high resolution that you know trying to use a, a sponge brush that big on the entire canvas w would kind of cause uh, the final image to kind of lag out and, and it made it so that it, it couldn't get as dense and I wouldn't have as much control over the brush uh, and so like if, if it didn't have the, that sponginess, the, the roughness of the uh, the initial thumbnail, I was okay with that. It was just, uh, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, if I could get something like that in there, that'd be great, but uh, it's not really necessary. If, if like, if, if that's just not an option, then it's just not an option. Uh, I, I think uh, even some clean work would look nice. And, uh, you know, by the time, like, by the, by the time that I finished this image, which was like uh, 12 hours worth of work, um, you know, I felt like it was a, a well-deserved uh, sort of um, amount of work uh, for the result, I felt, uh, primarily because I spent just as much time doing the cross-hatching for the shadows as I did with the highlights, uh, and... Uh, I think the, the the only thing that I kind of regret with this entire image is uh, the background. Now uh, I decided that I should have uh, something for the like the same stuff that I've been doing recently with the backgrounds, where uh, the line work fades to a bit of a gray uh, to kind of help add the uh, sensation of atmospheric uh, distortion and stuff. And that's fine. That turned out looking fine. But the the plants, the the weird bulb looking plants, uh, that right there, I felt like I used too much of a thick brush, and uh, you know even still with the, that that brush that wound up being really thick, uh, it wound up taking absolutely forever. But even still, I think that if I used a, a thinner brush, it, it would have looked a little bit better. Um, but even still, regardless, I think it turned out looking excellent. Uh, I decided, like, there should be some sort of structure, some sort of something underneath the orb. And uh, so I constructed something that kind of looks like uh, a lighthouse of some sort. Um, and just having a lighthouse would be kind of confusing, so I put these, these weird claws that come out. Uh, I kind of think, like, after the fact that maybe people might feel like I'm 
ripping off Lord of the Rings, but there's really absolutely no reason for me to rip off the Lord of the Rings considering the fact that I, I kind of hate the Lord of the Rings. I, I don't think it made a very good movie and I don't think that it made a very good book series. I mean, I recognize it made history and all that, but uh, I just, I'm not a fan at, at all. Uh, I like The Hobbit, but yeah, um, uh, just just in case anyone thinks that I, I pulled inspiration from uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's work. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I don't even like most of what J.R.R. Tolkien made. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just a little bit of food for thought. Uh, but yeah, as you can see that this took absolutely forever, uh, getting these really dense, thin lines going on with the uh, lighthouse, and they were barely even noticeable anyhow. So I wound up actually copying and pasting them around, and uh, that, that wound up being a bit of a speed boost. One of the benefits of working with digital media is that you can do something like that. And since I constructed the, the, the rock face to the left uh, more geometrically, actually thinking of all of this as geometric shapes, uh, instead of running into the same sort of pitfalls that I ran into on the rock structure to the right side of the canvas. Um, <clears throat> you can see that I, I was presented with different sorts of decisions. Uh, there, you know, near the top, kind of near the top, there's a series of kind of broken up bits of rock. And uh, I decided to just have that portion just be hatched instead of cross hatched. And... Uh, having each set of hashes uh, just kind of going uh, a different direction, kind of thinking like a checkerboard to some extent, except instead of it being, you know, black squares and white squares, uh, you know, some would have verticals, some would have a diagonal leaning to the right, and then some would have a diagonal leaning to the left, and, and, and never having two sets of stones where uh, the hatches are, are just doing one thing uh, paired up right next to each other uh, that sort of thing now while making this image I was uh, I, like I knew that I was going to have a light source in the center of the canvas just like I did with the previous video uh, that I made and so I, I really kind of feel like I, I did a, a really good job with the lighting in this video uh, at least for me uh, you know there are like technical techniques for how people go about trying to find out where the shadows should be and and uh, try to find out the perfect shadow and all that uh, but generally I kind of just feel like um, no one's going to be double checking your work uh, it's like mathematically and stuff like that and as long as you know where the light source is and you know to put your shadow on the opposite side of objects uh, then where the light source is located then you did a good job in general that's kind of just how I feel and uh, yeah you can see me uh, kind of finishing off this uh, rock face to the left and uh, so it's at this point that I think I started to yeah I started to work on the orb here uh, I, I didn't put the light in there but you know I just drew out the initial circle for it and then I started to kind of construct the actual, you know, the, the plants with the bulb. Uh, the cross-hatching going down, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I feel like the cross-hatching is just a little bit too thick. Uh, I should have had uh, the cross-hatching be uh, thinner and much more dense. And, uh, but in the end, I'm, I'm looking at it and, and I, don't, I don't really feel uh, too frustrated with it. I feel like, uh, you know, I'm totally satisfied with this image. I still feel as though this is like a masterpiece. Uh, I would have wound up having to work on the image uh, an additional like four, maybe five more hours if I decided to go the route that uh, I'm talking about with thinner lines and stuff. But uh, again, I, I just think it would have been uh, a bit more worth it. Uh, at least in my mind, I think it would have been worth it if I if I had just uh, kind of stuck it out and just kept working and having thinner lines. Uh, the, uh, now with the bulbs, you'll notice that I'm drawing out this, these weird shapes on each bulb 
And the idea is that the bulb uh, is kind of like a reflective sort of surface. And uh, is, I, I, as I progress further on when with working on them, I, I wound up uh, kind of uh, putting little bits of light bloom on them. And, uh, you know, one of the frustrations is that, uh, you know, I, I found out while recording this video that there is one little segment where I forgot to press record for 30 minutes uh, of content. And uh, so you're, you're going to see that it just kind of skips ahead, unfortunately. But, <clears throat> in, you know, I, the, the stuff that I did in that 30 minutes... I think I, I, I included a lot of the footage um, in there so you know what sort of workflow I was doing and in general uh, I don't I don't think that you guys are, are missing out too much with what it was that I was doing but with these bulbs I, I feel like the the actual you know the silhouette of the objects the line work the thickness of the line work for the silhouette of these objects are just fine but I just, yeah, it's just the cross hatching that I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in. Uh, but yeah, and I, I was trying to perceive if the light source is here and I have a bulb behind this other bulb, <clears throat> wouldn't there be a shadow here on this other plant's uh, bulb? And, and yet still there would possibly be a little bit of a reflection on it. Uh, in a, in kind of around the border of, of the portion of the bulb that would be facing the 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 orb in the center of the of the canvas, and uh, I don't just illustrate a background in, in this image, but I kind of feel as though like there there are people that are subscribed to me. They they keep asking me questions like, "Hey, when are you gonna do character designs?" You know, like character design sessions and to me uh, character design sessions are not as important as constructing the world that they live in uh, I, I am I am uh, at least in in the next coming years I suppose I do plan on on uh, doing character design work but one, one of the things that I find the most frustrating is that a, a lot of people they they just focus on character design and then they never go past that they never learn how to draw a background and they're just stuck there forever and uh, when you wind up saying hey it'd be really nice to see you illustrate a picture with a with a story and they say oh well it, it was not it, this image was never supposed to have a story uh, it, it's just concept image work like well that's great but you've you've always done that Let, let's see you tell a story and they just never do they never they're they're always in in pre-production and that's a little frustrating uh, to see out of people's artwork where as, I don't know to me having a character that's different from another character because this one this character he wears this type of clothes Whereas this other character wears this other type of clothes. He's cooler because, you know, he just has a different style from this other character. Uh, I don't know. To me, that's that's not character development. That's not uh, character design. Um, to me, characters are, are a lot more than just what they look like. In fact, I, I'm more interested in a character that looks horrifying, but is like behaves nothing like what they look like. That like trying to shatter the expectations of the audience and such. That's that's the sort of thing that I'm interested in. And the, the characters are like there's no point in having a character if you don't know what the world is that they live in ultimately that's kind of how i feel and uh so if if i were to ever hire uh, an author uh, some some writer to help me write the story to this i would have enough imagery and enough content to where 
they they could actually kind of be inspired and be able to come up with a story. And here, you know, after drawing out the uh, the electricity and and the orb in the center of the canvas, I went ahead and used the airbrush to create this light bloom. And then, it, you know, it's time to kind of lay down the highlights uh, to everything. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I spent every bit as much time working on the highlights as I did uh, in working with the, uh, with the shadows. Uh, this image took a very long time. And surprisingly, most of it I did all in one sitting. Uh, <clears throat> my fingers kind of started to hurt at some point in time. Uh, you know, I've thought about, you know, making a brush that might be able to make multiple hatches all at once. But <clears throat> you look at the, uh, the cross-hatching brushes that other people have made, and most of the time I, I'm, I'm just not really impressed with them. And I, I just kind of think... I don't think software is and the hardware to detect uh, the angle of your of your stylus and stuff. I don't feel as though it's refined well enough to to get a, a cross hatching brush to really work in a way that that actually looks like a professional was doing that work. So yeah, I, I, I've generally just kind of avoided using a, a brush designed to m <clears throat> make multiple hatches all at once uh, just simply because I, I just don't feel like the end result ever looks good and uh, it, when I started doing these highlights I, I was really really thinking yeah you know this is this is really looking like a Bernie Wrightson image uh, and, and that's some of the the benefit of, of working with uh, uh, a gray canvas you're able to not just work on the shadows but you're you're able to work on the highlights as well and uh, it kind of helps you uh, flesh things out uh, you don't have to just rely upon the white canvas and, and just keep on building up building up building up uh, all of the shadows inside of your canvas because you know some of that gray can easily just be the you know, it, 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 that could be the actual uh, shadows as well, I suppose. I mean, that, that could be part of the values that's visible. And uh, you can see that I, I decided to cross-hatch all of the ground as well. <clears throat> like, it, it, just about everything inside of this image was cross-hatched. Um, and, and so, like, that's something that I noticed out of Bernie Wrightson's artwork. It's just such immaculate uh, sort of coverage with the, uh, with the cross-hatching. And uh, I, I believe Bernie Wrightson was a comic book artist. And the idea that, I mean, you, you read books about comic books and they say don't overdo it with a cross-hatching. And yet... You look at Bernie Wrightson's images, and I, yet they, you know, cross hatching absolutely everywhere, and yet somehow uh, it, it worked well when the size was reduced to the size of a of, of a normal comic book. I, that is kind of surprising, I, and I think it's kind of awesome in a way. So, <clears throat> yeah, you can see me kind of fleshing this out I used a bit of a uh, a much brighter value of white uh, along the top of this this uh, tower I suppose I should call it and uh, you know for, for the overwhelming majority of the tower I just I didn't really use too much yeah this is where the video kind of skips ahead a little bit uh, but I, I didn't really use uh, too much darker or, or super bright uh, values with the background because it's so far away uh, and so yeah I just felt like that was a good approach to, to go with with something that far away but if it's right next to a really bright light source why not you know have it you know the reflected light uh, the reactive sort of 
sort of light uh, coming off of an object. Why, why not use uh, a really you know strong value for that? And so yeah, here you know I, I usually don't illustrate like this. This is this is what I kind of consider to be kind of a painterly style. I find it more difficult uh, to to get your proportions correct because it's a lot. I mean like. I don't know it's hard to get your silhouettes it's especially when you have overlap it's hard to get your silhouettes to have the proportions that you want um, and it, it's it, to me sh shifting around line work or uh, having to erase line work and having to redo it again is a heck of a lot easier than <clears throat> having to and constantly fiddle around with the silhouette and uh, you can see I I have a character that's jumping off of the uh, the rock face uh, to the right of the canvas and then I have another character uh, at, at the lower end of the uh, of the canvas standing on the the rock structure on the left side of the canvas as well and uh, initially I thought, you know, they're, they're just going to be silhouettes. It's just going to be so bright that you wouldn't really be able to see them very well. And then I was thinking, well, wait a second. They, they are holding a light source right in front of them. So although uh, they will be put into silhouette to some extent, since, since they have a light source right in front of them, you would be able to see some details. So I decided to go ahead and include that. Now, with this character that's kind of in midair and such, uh, you know, after looking at the image and, and after I worked on, on the, the second character in the scene, I, uh, I wound up looking at the character that's airborne up there and thought, man, that guy's head is enormous, so I wound up shrinking it down. Uh, so yeah, you know, if, if you noticed that, it's something that I wound up addressing. I was thinking about cross-hatching a, a little bit of a darker value, kind of going down the middle of that tower. Uh, but when it was all said and done, it just seemed like, you know, how about I just use a soft eraser, this, like with soft edges and stuff, and just kind of feather it. It, it, it was faster, and uh, it looked better. And so why the heck not? And uh, this is another thing that was a bit of a frustration, right? Like right here, um, trying to get all of the details uh, just right with this guy, um, especially facial features. Uh, in the end, it, it looks a little bit more stylistic. I, I think you like you would normally be able to see more of his face. Uh, if he had the the his you know electro blade in front of him, I think you would be able to see more of his face. But I think it just looks more dynamic if you don't. And not only that, I guess trying to construct a person's face uh, th with this painterly sort of uh, style where you're working with silhouettes, uh, I think that my uh, specific amount of skill with that would be it wouldn't be able to really do the character the right amount of justice if I were to try to add more of his facial features and stuff uh, you can see me playing around with it here and there and trying to get it just right inside of the previous image that I made last week I gave this guy uh, some stubble and so I, I thought okay well let, yeah let's go ahead and give him some stubble and uh, you know try to make him look at least a little bit like how he did in the previous video and uh, you know I, I haven't really been thinking about too many specifics with how these characters should look but you, you can you can really see that uh, it, it's kind of come together and so here's the final image on the screen right now I think it came out looking awesome and uh, you know, even though I put all this effort on these characters, in the end, the main emphasis is is the world, the environment. And after looking at the image long enough, you would be able to notice, oh, there's a character, there's characters here, there's a story going on here. I like that. 
Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to join my Discord. If you'd like to support this channel, there's an image of my mascot in the upper right corner of the screen. It leads to my Patreon. Or feel free to purchase one of my t-shirts. A link to my Teespring is in the video description below. If you've enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to click on anything else appearing on the screen right now.